Hello, I'm Jan. Thanks for being here. Today we'll be taking a look at a fantastic wheel. A Canadian production wheel. Eve Spins on her channel did a fantastic video featuring her wheel, Philippe. It's a great wheel, a great name, and I'm a huge fan of her channel and all of her videos. She asked if anyone had any information on these wheels, and I wanted to share a little bit of what I know about these fantastic wheels. These Pictures are of my mom's wheel. These were produced mostly in Quebec, but some examples originate from places as Nova Scotia, Manitoba, or some of the Canadian territories. Meaning, it's not... They're called Quebec-style wheels, and Quebec, although ma many of them, and majority of them, were produced in Quebec, uh, doesn't mean that that was the originating place of them. These are really nice wheels. A large diameter wheel, and very fast flyer. These wheels will, were all made for speed and it shows from the mechanical advantage. I've heard, and I don't remember where I read it, that these were as, sold as kits for wheelwrights with the cast treadle and the cast holder of the mother of all sold with the plans. These were usually constructed by wheelwrights who you, had the knowledge of blacksmiths or farriers. Other wheelwrights would work with a farrier or a blacksmith for the wrought iron parts when the finished wheel was uh, when the parts for the finished wheel were completed. Some companies produced these wheels as well as individual craftsmen did. They're all they're prob they're all not marked, and probably for this reason, as many people did produce them. So here we're going to go over. Another example that I found in a book, which is just one of great book. This is Judith Buxton Keenly Sides, Selected Canadian Spinning Wheels in Perspective, an Analytical Approach. This is a hard book to get, and I wish it wasn't so expensive or rare, but this has a lot of great information on the... Canadian wheels in general from all over. So here I'll, I'll read because the scan that you can see behind me that I scanned from this book is a little bit hard to read from. This unsigned Quebec wheel is from Manitoba and is probably early 20th century. The family to whom the wheel belonged report that it was made in Sifton, the town where Spinwell wheels were made. Possibly the Spinwell Company did custom work and may have built this wheel after the style of current double-drive Quebec wheels, perhaps importing, importing special parts such as the metal treadle piece from that province. It may also be that the company marketed wheels other than its own brands, obtaining ready-made ready models from makers in other parts of Canada. The saddle on the spinning wheel is more triangular than rectangular, constricting from a maximum of 16 centimeters at the wheel to 7 centimeters at the rear. Other distinguishing features include a stiff metal footman, extensive turning on most pieces, and only one secondary wheel support. Note also the purely decorative tension screw handle and single axle pin, the large drive wheel at 73 centimeters, the tilt tension and metal treadle piece are common to most Quebec wheels. Tensioning is, mo most, is most like that exhibited by another wheel on figure 78. A black metal casing clamps the mother of all to the saddle top and a wing nut on the wheel side allows the clamp to be relaxed for adjustment of the mother of all's position. The wing nut is then retightened. The unpainted wheel is a pale oak color. This double drive wheel is a cho choice of two spindle pulleys, but they are the same size at a diameter of 4.5 centimeters. The mechanical advantage is quite high at 16.2, and the bobbin lead of 50% is greater than most Quebec wheels. The spinning orifice is medium size. The flyer has eight U-shaped wire guides. Spinning height at 65 centimeters is very close to that of other Quebec wheels. And that just, I think, shows how amazing this reference is as far as describing the use of spinning wheels, which was really quite revolutionary because most spinning wheels had been described in terms of process of making fabric or the process of knitting. And so describing the items 
the spinning wheels by themselves as for just being used for spinning, I think was really an amazing thing that is in this book. So, which brings us to the closing of uh, what I wanted to talk about today, which is just kind of a quick point. And that's spinning wheel oil. Treadle wheels do drink the stuff, and many people wonder, what is the best oil for my wheel? And I have to say, sewing machine oil works great. However, it's thin and can really make a mess. What we want as spinners in our oil is something that has little or no additives and is pretty much just a straight petroleum lubricant. Motor oil, the kind that we would put in our car, has 11 herbs and spices to make the innards of our internal combustion engines run smoothly. And these additives can discolor, corrode, and cause a handful of other problems for a spinning wheel. So our sewing machine oil and other common three-in-one household oils are a, light, are a very light, thin oil with almost zero additives. For me, what I've been using lately have, has been this mobile Vactra number no. two ways oil, and I've been using it on all my spinning wheels. This oil's only additive is just a wax to help it stick to surfaces and become a little bit more uh, thicker and viscous. For, it, it, and for this reason, it makes a little bit less mess than sewing machine oil, and I've noticed that you don't need to use as much. It turns it from the bigger the gob, the better the job, and to just a dab will do you. It's the same results with less mess. So thank you for joining in. Feel free to leave comments or questions in the space provided by YouTube. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep on treadling.